appreciate it very much. Uh, thank you for having me here. I, uh, I attend such occasions before. It's very impressive, I have to say. Uh, the knowledge of the, uh, about China among my fellow speakers is probably even more than the, uh, some of the foreign expats, ex expats living in China, Shanghai or Beijing. It's very um, impressive to know that uh, um, so much passion and so much uh, energy I, I saw here today about uh, talking about China. As a matter of fact, uh, a lot being discussed around crisis since the morning, you know, starting in the morning. I thought crisis management is something, if you talk about principle-wise, it will be more or less consistent worldwide, uh, no difference. So I want to share with you, what I want to share with you this afternoon is really about the China context. What is the bit different? What is totally different? And probably uh, we will share with some, some data, for example, our uh, Fantara issue obviously is being highly uh, uh, discussed already, uh, but I want to show you some data to see how public of China respond to that issue. First of all, let me share with you two slides, uh, which is a study conducted uh, 10 years ago by the company by uh, name uh, Henley World. It compares the, uh, the uh, 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 how much uh, multinational companies, brands like Sony or Microsoft, uh, regarded in China. I, I'm not sure if you can read clearly that, as a matter of fact, uh, brands, foreign company brands like Sony, Microsoft, Coca-Cola, is more trusted than doctors, than your colleagues, than your neighbors in China. That's where the multinational brands were 10 years ago. <coughs> so it's, it's, let's take a look what, what's different now. I think if you talk about the previous 10 years in terms of crisis management seen in China, you need, to, you need to remember two very significant events. Uh, one, clearly associated with uh, New Zealand again, it's about the man my issues. Probably for you, one of my issues uh, is a, uh, it's a, it's a shock, but um, uh, in China, it, I, it's, not, it's not exaggerating to say that it redefined uh, the whole um, <coughs> nation, public. Uh, it's literally, unfortunately, destroyed the moral standard. Uh, if, think about it, a big brand, state-owned company, what they can do to kids, to babies, so what else is still beyond imagination? So that incident happened in 2008, unfortunately, totally destroyed the, 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 the moral system in, in China. And the next one is about this young lady. I don't know how many of you know about this picture. Raise your hand. Okay, um, her name is Wu Mei Mei. She is, uh, um, in 2011, she posted uh, as one of the cultures, uh, my colleague uh, Jeremy is going to discuss more about the social culture in social media space. One of the social media culture in China is show off. So she posted pictures like she's driving Maserati, she's using LV uh, bags, you know, all those luxury things. Uh, she happened to verify herself or confirm herself as one of the gen general managers of Red Cross division. And before that, Red Cross is probably the most well-respected uh, charity organization in China. <coughs> and just one single post picked in uh, Weibo, you already know uh, that China uh, Weibo is equivalent to probably Twitter plus Facebook. Just one that tweet um, caused huge trouble to Red Cross. As a matter of fact, in the following six months, Red Cross received zero donation. Uh, that's, again, it's a very, very significant uh, event for two reasons. One is that from uh, the, the first time social media is in the core about how fast it can express, uh, spread the news and how fast people can evolve and literally becoming a, a nation, nationwide party. 
The second thing is that, again, think about someone like Red Cross, if that can be destroyed overnight. Um, again, um, I guess there is not much respect left over in most of, let's say, you know, government organizations or the companies. So we will, it's easy to say that uh, most of the multinational brands are uh, stepping down from the altar. As what Jamie just mentioned, uh, from FT just mentioned that, uh, uh, yes, it's a wake up call for you, uh, ready to go to China, but unfortunately, from probably from this year onwards, uh, the overall situation for multinational companies running, operating in China becomes more and more challenging. You have seen all these big names, most of them are associated with certain crises in the previous years. So I, I try to explain to you from two aspects. One is in the culture context, one is from the uh, um, uh, media context, um, uh, back to communications. In the culture context, I think one thing, first thing, uh, um, even though you are very, you, you are not necessarily there yet, you, you are coming to China, even though probably, um, um, uh, unfortunately, you are New Zealand brand are also categorized as the international multinational brands. And for the multinational brand, you have to understand that you usually were highly regarded. The expectation was raised so high. And so naturally, when all these incidents happen, you will see people, the feeling of let down, and even to some, to some extent, betrayal. And the product safety is on the top of the list, not to mention uh, the food safety. We did a survey every, we actually did that every year. So we, we sort of like putting 50 cases together last year. And when we sort of like work out the top 10, out of the top 10, eight are related to food safety. So um, that's obviously um, food sectors, I guess is one of the biggest uh, exporting sectors from New Zealand. You have to be, uh, you obviously need to pay attention to that. Um, the overall, if, if you want me to talk about the overall context, I think that's one of the most challenging things for all the brands, all the companies, all the governments to face in China, even the Chinese government itself, is that the lack of trust. That's rather unfortunate. Um, for example, the uh, um, Usually, you will turn to, when, when things happen, you will turn to third-party experts, right? You will ask for third-party independent experts for quotes. Unfortunately, the name of the reputation of experts was destroyed in China as well. Uh, people doesn't really believe, believe in experts. Whichever expert coming out to, to say something, uh, to clarify or, on, or to say something on behalf of either government or the, uh, the company, uh, he or he, she most probably will be criticized or uh, being accused of taking money on the table. You know, uh, that's the situation that actually stopped those uh, real experts to speak out because you know nobody really wants to be in that position, right? Um, that's why, for example, one of the uh, one of the um, um, cases we help with our client with. When they said something like um, they, 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 they are sure about A, B, C, I told them, um, you need to give me proof. You can't just say A is A. Word is not just word in China. You need to show me proof. You need to show me a lot of documents, lab results. Uh, you need to show me all the proofs to prove what you said. <laughs> So that's, I guess, a bit different from where you live. Um, when you are you know, in the law frame, like a deal is a deal, you need to understand that it's, it's very different. Um, let's do agenda. I think I, I don't want to repeat that again. I mean, Jamie made it very, very clear on, on this part. There is definitely for the new government in place. Uh, they want to uh, work in those sectors like, for example, infant formula, which um, I guess you all heard that uh, <coughs> Chinese are buying a lot of infant formula all over the world, which, uh, to be honest, is quite embarrassing for Chinese government. So it's only natural that uh, Chinese government choose to uh, try to uh, uh, take some action in that sectors. 
uh, the anti-monopoly investigation among all the brands uh, in China, I think it's because of that um, uh, background. And also, one of the ways to bring the price down, the infant formula, one of the reasons you go overseas, one is obviously on trust issues. The second is really the price issue as well. It's much higher in China, as in the auto sectors, as in medical sectors. That's why you see different actions on. And unfortunately, uh, probably the multinational companies are easy to be targeted. Partially because of uh, nationalism is also real in China. Uh, when, when, when we talk about nationalism, I think uh, if, you, if you try to understand that perspective, within such a short time frame, China economy grows hugely, rapidly, and now we are number two in the world. Uh, a lot of us coming, go out to travel around the world, uh, waving the checks, buying properties, buying uh, a lot of stuff, uh, luxury stuff, queuing in uh, LV stores in Paris. Um, it, it boosts somehow the ego, right? It's, it's easy to understand. So the nationalism is something which I think government also try to leverage from time to time. So nationalism is real. However, it, it's, it's very interesting if, uh, obviously it's a big topic to discuss. It's very interesting to see uh, it has different perspectives. For example, in the uh, Asian uh, air crash, this, uh, this uh, uh, Chris mentioned this morning, in San Francisco recently, um, you see different things, different things were discussed in China, probably different than any else in the world. For example, we're discussing why a plane starting from Seoul, Korea to US, San Francisco, half of the passengers are Chinese. Well, obviously, that's a big subject being discussed at that time. And another thing very interesting is because uh, social media, right? A lot of passengers are tweeting, by the way, on the site. One of the lady tweets saying, uh, I was grabbing my luggage uh, from the cabinet and then I'm running, you know, uh, it's a chaos on the site, etc. She tweeted on, on Weibo, and later on, there is uh, a, a huge uh, criticism against her because people are criticizing her for taking her luggage during such hour. It could be dangerous to the others. Why? It's because um, someone mentioned this morning about face. It's because people feel in public, general public in China, feel that she is, what, what her behavior is uh, losing face for China, right? It's been like being, uh, uh, um, taking or behaving improper, improperly in front of the international world is something you don't want your fellow um, net, uh, citizens uh, to do. Uh, there are huge uh, things, uh, there's another recent, in fact, is, uh, a story is that uh, a young boy, I think it's a teenager, he, uh, he left his, he tried to left his mark in one of the Egypt um, architecture, Asian architectures. So he carved his name on that brick. And probably it's not a big story anywhere else, but it becomes a, such a big story in China because it's a huge loss of faith. And I think, you know, when you think about nationalism, sometimes you need to refer to faith as well, because it's, it's big, it's huge in China culture. And uh, that wraps up the culture uh, bit. Uh, next, I move on to the uh, media context. Obviously, everyone knows now it's global. Everything, you know, happens here, instantly transfer back to, um, to um, um, globally, including China. And in terms of social media wise, um, there is a session dedicated to that afterwards, so I won't speak about on that. I just want to mention two things. One is that remember, all the players in China in social media space, all the winners are Chinese. No international brands are winning there. Not Google, not YouTube, uh, not uh, uh, any, anything else, right? It's all Chinese uh, big names winning there. Two is that, as a matter of fact, it's very sophisticated. It's not in each, it's very vertical, as a matter of fact, right? Whatever you have in US or UK or uh, Europe or in New Zealand, you will have similar ones in China, and most probably several. Uh, so that's the overall you know, social um, uh, environment in China.
everything becomes faster because of the uh, the uh, the social environment. I, I'm going to uh, discuss a bit about how what's the right speed in terms of responding to to issues uh, later. And uh, from especially from last year onwards, 2012 onwards, we can confidently to say that social is not just helping distributing the news, but rather they are driving the opinions. And, uh, and as a matter of fact, most of the media are very, very reporters are very active on social media space. They are sort of like interacting with the public, and whatever they write is driven by the public opinion. In most cases, especially related to uh, company brand prices. So that's uh, that's really phenomenal from last year onwards. Um, in terms of media context, you, I, I, I think it's very important also to mention there is a, a strong criticism or a doubt or distrust about official media. Um, one of the very typical cases happened last year. Uh, March 15th is a consumer day. It's, a, it's huge in China. Every year, CCTV, the central China Central Television, is going to put up a program which brands will be picked up that day, and those brands are, are very unfortunate. They have to. Uh, uh, it's a it's disaster for them. Anyway, last year, first time, um, we saw something different. That uh, McDonald's was picked that time. Uh, one of the restaurants in Beijing picked up. They're selling, I think they have internal regulations to say if the food was not sold like six hours, they need to throw it away. The, the, the staff didn't do that, right? It's about eight hours, they didn't do that. And, uh, and uh, that's why the you know, CCTV uh, take the whole thing and put it, put it on. I think McDonald's did very well in terms of standard procedure-wise how they respond. They respond in like about 80 minutes, with, with the, I mean just in 80 minutes time, they put out a statement, very standard. We are sorry for that. We shut down the restaurants. We will fully cooperate with the government to, to figure out why, and then we will give you an update. Very standard, within 140 characters on, on social media on Weibo. What's amazing, what was unexpected, is that on that exact evening, there are a lot of people talking on social media, including those uh, uh, key KOLs, uh, those ones with uh, millions of fans. They're saying something like, hey, you know, we all know food safety is a big problem in China, but look at the kitchen of McDonald's. It's very clean. There are so many issues uh, in China, in the food sector. Why CCTV you are picking up McDonald's? And then later on, I think in the following morning, there is some guy, I don't know who, but uh, Someone initiated a vote online. A vote, <coughs> who do you trust? McDonald or CCTV? <laughs> it's, I'm pretty sure it's not organized by McDonald's. Right? It's not a company action. And as a matter of fact, you know, so many people voted for McDonald's. So many people said, I will go to McDonald's today to vote my trust, to, to, to show my, my, my support. As a matter of fact, so many pictures circulating that day on social media to show it's full, packed, people are queuing. <laughs> it's, a rare, it's a rare case. It's just, uh, it's just right at the right moment that uh, people's distrust about CCTV just reached that point. And, and uh, uh, we, by the way, we saw that happen again this year. This year, this past March, uh, Apple was picked up, and then almost a similar thing happened, not to, large, to, not, not to the scale of last year, but it's very similar. So that's also one of the things uh, happening nowadays, is that uh, people really doesn't have that trust in um, official media. And in another, from another perspective, that's one of the, uh, uh, the functions social media plays, and social media offers a much tr more trustworthy platforms for, for consumers, for publics. Weibo, we already, you already heard about it, it's huge. Um, KOLs, it's something also very um, unique uh, in China. I, I try to categorize them into several categories. One is celebrities, like the one you work with, Yao Chen, right? She now has, someone said this morning, millions, millions. But as a matter of fact, she now has like over 50 million followers. Think about Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola on Facebook globally only have like 60 million. 
So that's, uh, that's really huge, right? Celebrities. And the media. Most of the media in China now move on to social. So media accounts, given you know, their strengths, their own strengths, etc., they're very influential on that. And then you have commercial accounts. Probably you never heard about that before. Uh, from day one of social media operating in China, people are trying different business models. One of the business models is that the company operates certain accounts to attract a lot of fans. And then it becomes a key influencer, and then they can make money out of that. For example, um, a certain company is running an account called Mix and Match. So telling, sharing, especially for young ladies, how you, you, know, how, how you dress. Right? So that is very valuable for any fashion brands when they're targeting very specifically. Right? So you do have a lot, I call them commercial accounts uh, in, in that sector. And plus, last but not least, the grassroots opinion leaders. Obviously, they are very, very important when, you, when you're managing uh, a crisis. Uh, why? The reason why is because we usually deal with reporters, right? Reporters, they are doing their jobs. They are, they are they're trained to be professional. Professional means they need to ask both sides. They need to interview. They need to verify uh, a, a, a news. But those guys, the KOLs, they, don't, they are not. Right? They can write whatever they want. I mean, obviously, you know, there's a limit, but it's very easy for them to, especially in retreat, right? They don't need to bear any responsibility. They just need to add one very simple comment. Is it true or false? Question mark. And then put that thing out. So it's, they're, they're very clean, right? They, they don't need to worry about responsibility. The other side, very, very importantly, is it can be become very, very emotional. As a reporter, uh, you, you need to write a story objectively. You need to stay calm, right? But as a person, as a KOL, as a person, they can curse. There is a lot of curse actually happening on social media platform in China. Um, so you can imagine how emotional, how dramatic it can be uh, in that. Uh, so that's a very challenging part for any brands uh, to manage. As I said, it can become very, very emotional. Um, back to the reporters. Um, the, um, un unfortunately, the situation in China is that um, um, the reporters change job so frequently. You really see someone reporting or interviewing you uh, is above the age of 30. Most of them are very, very young. Young means they are not, not experienced. Young means they need a lot of education work, etc. Obviously, increase uh, it. Uh, it is another job the company or the brand need to do if you think about dealing with uh, media. Uh, not, I, I guess it's very similar anywhere else in the world. They are very pro-consumers. So the cost for crisis, actually, with the social media era, the cost of uh, the, the crisis is much higher than before. Uh, I share with you one of the cases. Uh, ba Wang is a local brand listed in the Hong Kong uh, stock market. It's a shampoo product. The, the, the story is very straightforward. They are criticized by one of the uh, magazines saying the product can lead to cancer. Within two days, um, uh, their name was cleared by AKSIQ. I, I heard the name mentioned, AKSIQ mentioned many, many times. Anyway, it's a very official statement to say their product is safe. So this, the story is very straightforward. It can happen to any brand. You didn't do anything wrong, your product is safe. Unfortunately, they didn't do it right. They didn't handle it right. And uh, I, 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 I think, uh, in particular, they didn't do the brand recovery right. So you can see their stock price dropped like fourfold within one year of time frame. And if you look at now, it's from five something Hong Kong dollar. Nowadays, it's about 30 cents in, in the stock market. Uh, if you ask me about the cost of prices, I think it's a very clear example to show you how, you know, how serious it can be. Um, we, as I said, you know, we did uh, some research every year on a yearly basis. Last year, what we did is that we combined 50 top uh, crisis cases and we, we tried to uh, con consolidate all the data. And I would like to share with you some very some findings very quickly. First of all, I'll give you a quick um, um, uh, look at. Um, if we talk about a crisis, everything speaking is about over 200,000 posts on, 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 online. And um, the average duration date is, is 16 days. 
um, that's not well. You know, I, I guess it's a good benchmark for any companies to compare if you know you want to. Um, the average proportion of negative sentiment is over 95 percent. One of the things about social media in China is that um, um, I tried to explain to someone just earlier this afternoon is that we don't have that much. To be honest, we don't have that much freedom of speech in the past. So social media is the first time a lot of people can speak, you know, freely. And obviously there's a lot of anger in the society. So naturally that platform, as I said, you can see a lot of curse there, right? There is a lot of anger there. So usually they will take the side, not not you know, they will take side against the company rather than you know stand by the company. Um, Average response speed is four days. That's amazing. That's that's really slow, right? Uh, that's amazing. However, um, that's the data. What the data said. And two out of third crisis cases spread by uh, KOLs. They play key roles. When we talk about handling handling the crisis, uh, a crisis, uh, I guess that's not different from you know, China or anywhere else in the world. We we divide them into three stages: prevent, contain, grow. And in the P. Uh, uh, in the in the preparation stage, I think two things. One is monitor. You need to monitor the space closely. You need to know what's happening there. Two is that you need to have a system in place. That's why McDonald can respond within 80 minutes to a you know issue statements. They have a system in place, obviously, right? They have work out the scenarios. They work out the, those statements in advance. Secondly, when you deal with the problem, I think uh, one of the things I discussed just now is about emotion. It's becoming more and more important that you're not just addressing or you're not just about clarifying the facts, but rather you need to pay attention to the emotions. I don't know if, if, if you know, um, know, it, uh, know about it or not. Uh, there's uh, latest, uh, the latest, the brain science actually indicates people. We, um, we, we thought we made, you know, the left brain is, is for logical thinking and, and right brain is for emotions. Uh, as a matter of fact, which part makes the decision? It's not the left side, it's the right side. So this um, uh, proof that how much, how important it is to pay attention to people's emotion during a crisis. We saw so many times company want to clarify just based on the facts. They just neglect the emotional part. They just want to say, hey, look, this is a fact. Unfortunately, a emotional crowd, the fact doesn't really work that well. <coughs> and um, obviously, it's a dialogue during the in the social media areas. You need to be uh, dialoguing, uh, uh, having a dialogue with them. And last but not least, re uh, recovery. I we we have seen so many things happening recently, which in terms of the um, uh, cost wise, in terms of the impact wise, it's huge. It's it's much bigger than before. And um, I, I, I think probably most of the companies, um, you know, they are focusing a lot on handling the crisis during that period of time, but forgetting the uh, recovery period, as a matter of fact, is equally important. I just want to show you two of the findings. One is in terms of responding speed. Uh, everyone is asking how fast should we respond. The data indicates if you, do, if you can do it within eight hours, or 24 hours, not bad, but in general, that will shorten the overall duration and the negative segments quite, significant, quite significantly. And the other thing is about who to respond, uh, who will respond. Normally, you will see a company issued a statement to say, Fonterra said so and so. But it will be much better if, say, Fonterra CEO Theo said so and so, said, right? Putting a person. And again, you can see that uh, with the executive response, it's, it's much uh, uh, lower, um, uh, shorter. Um, the other thing uh, is that the worst situation is about if you allow your staff to answer on behalf of the company right away on the spot. It's definitely 100% active. So you probably need to have a system in place, you need to alert your staff that uh, not everyone can speak on, on behalf of the, uh, the uh, company. We did some quick scenario uh, study on Fonterra. You see, the, thing, the whole thing happened over the weekend, right? It's on, 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 on Saturday. And then Fonterra did a press conference on Monday. 
And the CEO in Beijing, we can just talk about face, right? It's huge face. It's, it's a big face thing. So I think what Fonterra did is really great in terms of responding speed, considering it's a weekend. In terms of the way they do it, they have a press conference, they take it very seriously, the CEO is there to apologize to Chinese people. I think that's really, really important. You will see that the yellow, uh, the, the columns, actually indicates the negative sentiment. So day one is very high and dropped uh, rapidly, dropped rapidly. And also, um, in the blue one is sh shows you the total volume. It reached the highest when CCTV covers that on that day. <coughs> the total volume, I, I just said, is about 210, right? 210,000. The total volume in this case, in that period, is about 180,000. So not bad. Uh, partially is because I think most of the uh, people are criticizing uh, brands involved like Coca-Cola, like Bahaha, like Dumex, rather than, than Fonterra. Uh, partially because Fonterra is not as well known as those brands. Usually, the big brands will, will, will take the heat. And uh, if you took it at the, uh, the, the angles people are discussing, naturally it's concerning, uh, you know, worry about the, the quality, etc. The positive side from day one is that people are commenting, it's about 20%, that Quatera uh, has a good sense of responsibility. And later on, when the Volkswagen news announced, um, you will see like over 40% people are, 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 are saying Fonterra is brave, you know, it's responsible, etc. So it's, it's really, uh, I think in China, I think one of the challenges for someone like Fonterra or any international brand is that when you are dealing with a crisis, you are dealing in markets simultaneously. So I don't know how people or the general public view this incident here in New Zealand, but back in China, this is the picture. And another point I just want to add on here is that um, fortunately or unfortunately, New Zealand brand, New Zealand as a country, its brand is so closely associated with Fonterra. So that's more or less on the same boat. Right? It's, it's, it's quite rare. It's not normal at least, right? If you talk about Intel, nobody in China would say it's a US Intel in most situations unless there is a you know, uh, uh, a significant, you know, situation happens. Otherwise, nobody will say it's a U.S. American Intel, rather it's just Intel. But in your case, Fonterra is really New Zealand Fonterra. A lot of uh, mentions I mentioned here is associated with, 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 uh, with uh, New Zealand brand. Um, in terms of, as I said, it was very, very important to build the brand by rebuilding the trust. Uh, Recipe-wise, uh, quite, Straightforward. You need to be honest. You need to. Uh, you need to be real. Um, a brand. You can't just pretend. Uh, you need to take actions. You need to do, or you need to deliver the words. And you need to understand. I think sometimes it's very difficult for the brand to do is this part. Is to understand. As I said, you know, the brand will say, "Why do you believe us?" Well, because it's not about a matter of facts at those times. You, you you need to understand why. You need to understand because of the. One single child policy because of all these people are, you know, working so hard, trying so hard to get quality food for their baby. And then now you're telling me there is an issue, you know, that's why. So understanding and simplicity is, is important. And last but not least, you need to invest in a new uh, relationship. I give you an example. KFC recently they had an issue with their vendors. They are, you know, the, the chicken vendors had some issues in, 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 in uh, it's, it's quite a big uh, impact uh, in China as well. And, um, and uh, what they did after wrapping up the whole thing, they, they launched the, uh, the, the action, one action called Sunder Action. Um, it's, it's basically, it's a um, activity to consolidate all the vendors. So they're going to run through all the vendors again. They're going to narrow from 1,000 vendors to 600 vendors. They're going to establish new standards for vendors, etc., cetera, et cetera. So that's one very typical uh, action a uh, 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 brand can take. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, not many brands are doing that. As a matter of fact, I will echo what um, Marco said, mentioned this, this morning. He said, I think, yes, the whole Fonterra issue is handled quite well at the beginning, at phase one. But for phase two, I don't believe you, 
you fully leverage the opportunity. Um, I think the, 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 the message of false alarm hasn't reached that many people as phase one. Uh, well, one of the reasons is because I don't know if you have the some similar sayings here, but in China we have a saying we said, uh, good news stays home, bad news travels a thousand miles. Right? People like, people love bad news. So when you have that great news, it's a false, false alarm, you, you need to take full leverage of that. You need to communicate as much as possible. You can't just let, just like, you know, try sending some press release out. It's not, it's not enough. So that's one of the, the reminders. Uh, my last part, I want to share with you um, a, some of the videos. Um, I was requested to, to say, can you share with some of us the good cases of managing crisis? Unfortunately, the good case is very, very rare. Not just in China, you know, all, all, or um, in, in, in uh, all across the, 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 the uh, globe. I we did a survey internally in, inside our global network. We are asking, you know, what do you think is the best uh, uh, crisis management case happened in recent years? And uh, um, we all, a lot of people mentioned Toyota recall case. I'm not sure if you are familiar with that Toyota recall case in the U.S. They are, they are, they are somehow. Very typical Japanese companies. They 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 move very slow at the very beginning. Uh, you know, people asking them, demanding them to recall. They didn't do it until it goes to U.S. Senate. So it's a very badly managed beginning. However, as any, if you know about Japanese companies, their execution is great. Whenever they made the decision. So from there onwards, they, they made it very very uh, uh, great. I just want to share with you the the, the, the case. Can you please uh, please. The, I have a the, of the, the first one is his apology. Go ahead. I like to say that I love cars as much as anyone, and I love Toyota as much as anyone. In the past few months, our customers have started to feel uncertain about the safety of Toyota's vehicle, and I think due to the time issue, I won't finish it. It's like one, 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 one half. It's very, you know, I, I just want to um, make one point here. It's very personal. He said something like, my name is on every car. He said something like, I am personally responsible for this whole thing. I will make sure each of my manager goes to front line to, um, you know, find out what's happening, etc., etc. So his, his apology is well uh, received. Next one, please. Providing you with safe, reliable, high-quality vehicles has been our first priority. In recent days, our company hasn't been living up to the standards that you've come to expect from us, or that we expect from ourselves. That's why 172,000 Toyota and dealership employees are dedicated to making things right. We have a fix for our recalls. We stop production so we can focus on our customers' cars first. And technicians are making repairs. We're working around the clock to ensure we build vehicles of the highest quality. To restore your faith in our company. So they are updating people with what they're doing during the, the process because communication is so important during that process. Let's skip uh, the, the next one, goes to the, the next one, please. History. Let's skip this one. Sorry, let's skip, skip this one. Next one. Toyota has done a lot of research and a lot of work. We've been open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and we made a tremendous amount of progress. You know, safety and reliability is top priority. I mean, I got a family too. I got a mother, a grandmother, and kids, and then we all drive in these cars. I am 100% confident in the product. We're grateful to the You see, that's the, you see people matters nowadays, especially under the social media situation. It worth the same value of CEOs. That's why they put a you know engineer front person, very, you know, I have grandmother, all, all, all my family members driving, uh, you know, uh, Toyota, etc. So that works very, very well. Uh, last but not least, as I said, you need to introduce a new system. That's what they did. They introduced, it's called the Star Safety Systems. 
and uh, let's play the video. Everyone deserves to be safe. That's why every Toyota now comes with the Star Safety System Standard. It's a combination of five accident avoidance technologies. The Star Safety System is something that's standard on 100% of Toyota vehicles. We always think of safety even in the concept design of our vehicles. The Star Safety System, now standard. Because we know there's nothing more important to you than your safety. All our new safety it's, it's a case not from China, but it's probably one of the most you know, well-received campaign I saw in recent years. And I think uh, it was uh, sharing with you here. Uh, my uh, conclusion, I think you know, what Warren Buffett said is perfectly a dis uh, description of how we handle or how we should handle crisis nowadays. Get it right, get it quick, get it out, and get it over. Move fast. Uh, make right moves, move fast, and move on. Um, that's, that's my conclusion. Thank you very much.